Hi guys, so in this video we are going to talk about the massacre against the Congolese Tutsis that took place in August 13, 2004 in Burundi but by the border with Congo. It was like a mile away from Burundi. So I don't know why they had a refugee camp from people running from persecution in the country from Congo. I don't know why they had the camp right by the border, like a walking distance, like a mile away. That's where Gatumba is, maybe two miles. That's still very close to the danger they were running from. So it was night time around 10 p.m. August 13, 2004. And that's when the refugee camp, it was a transit for refugees. For, and the camp was of, Ban of Banyamulenge refugees but the camp had like two, two parts one side was of Congolese from different tribes and the other side it was only Banyamulenge so I don't know why they had peoples separate again so anyway the attackers they came they were speaking Congolese languages such as Bembe and Lingala and also Kirundi so they were mixed between Congolese and Hutus that were led by Agato Gwasa the picture you see is Agato Gwasa that's the one he was a rebel his uh, political party was uh, at the time it was called FNL Hutu people Peple Hutu it was in French Peple Hutu but it means Hutu people so he was very extremist, he's still extremist, and he's still free in his government. So, anyway, at that time, at that night, the refugee was attacked. They killed people with machetes, they burned people in their tents, you know. And that was a refugee camp under the United Nations. It wasn't like in their country. It was in another country, Burundi, the place where they ran away to, they were sick, sick, uh, to, to seek a shelter. But they were killed. Why were they killed? Because it was women and children mostly. Why were they killed? They were killed because they are Tutsis. Their physical f features is long. We gotta keep everything real. Their noses, they are pointy, they have a long neck and they are more tall and skinny those are the characteristics of the Tutsis so when they see us they think they see a snake so Hutus of Burundi not all of them so I'm gonna be honest uh, I'm gonna be using those political terms people don't wanna use in public if you go to Rwanda you can't say Hutu or Tutsi you go to Burundi it's okay so you can say whatever you want but most, most of the time people they don't talk about Hutu or Tutsi or whatever you know they like to hide those things like it's like uh, taboo words you don't want to use those they are mean they're it's racist no no P Hutu people are beautiful people they are awesome so but that doesn't mean uh, I don't have to share what I have to share about what happened you know it's just like you know so anyway some Hutu extremists they were working with other Congolese extremists. Yeah, the Hutu of Burundi and Rwanda and other Congolese tribes, they always work together, even though they speak different languages. So, we Tutsis, Banyamulenge, we speak the same language as the Hutus. But, the Hutus, they get along with those tribes that we don't. So, the Hutus, they team up with other Cong Congolese tribes to kill the Tutsis. So, be why? Because they are all the same. The Hutu people and other Congolese tribes, they are all in the same group called Bantu people. So Bantu people, they speak similar languages, their physical features are the same, they look like West Africans, but so they have different Bantu ethnic groups, like from Central Africa to all the way to South Africa, all those um, Bantu tribes from all those countries, they are very, very close and their languages are very the same. You go to West Africa, they are Bantu, but they are different from the Bantus of 
of East Africa, Central Africa, South African countries. So they are different and the languages is different and the culture is different. So my point is to focus on the Bantu from Central Africa, where I came from. So, so those guys, they just hate Tutsis. That's it. So in Congo, we are viewed, viewed as outsiders because of our physical look. It's not like because uh, we came to Congo as immigrants, as refugees. You know, they like to use those terms, but that's not true. Because we were in Congo before Congo became Congo, before Africa was divided, before 1885, the Conference of Berlin. Before that, we were in Congo. Our ancestors, they fought with animals. The area was empty. Nobody was living there. So they have to fight animals that we would come to, kill, to, to, take, to eat their cows. So they always fight the lions. So, but again, those people, later on they come, they say, you guys are strangers. So that is what happens. So they, so long story short, the massacre took place on the 13th. It was the Hutu of Burundi, not all the Hutu, but the Hutu led by Agator Gwasa, like the picture you saw. So, and the other extremists from Congo, specifically from neighboring tribes that always uh, fight Banyamulenga, such as the Bembe. Not all the Bembe again, but those Bembe extremists. You know who I'm talking about if you are Bembe. You know how your people are. Some of your people are extremists and they hate Tutsis. So, and this is not like me just saying this. There's so many people from those tribes, they also feel sorry for the hatred of the Tutsis. So, they condemn, they speak for us all the time. You know, even today, yes, there is many people from Bembe tribe condemning the people for all the massacre they are committing against Banyamulang. So, there is no such a thing as all bad tribe, you know. But some tribes they have extremists that need to be stopped. They are very evil people. They are very weak. They don't know how to live peacefully with other people. You know, if you if you are going to attack civilians who is unarmed, you know, just because they came from different ethnic group as from you, that doesn't mean you are strong. It means you are weak. You are afraid to live with people who look different from you people who speak different language so you are afraid you are terrified you think you you will be intimidated you think you will lose your uh you, you they will be more rich than you are they will take your land they will control you all those things that makes you scary they are all a delusion you know be strong be a man uh, build your family work hard you know try to you know work hard for your family and to prove to to be better than those people financially, you know, be more stable, but through your own intelligence, not through just killing. Because he looks different, go kill them. You no, know? you are not a Congolese because you, you, your physical feature doesn't look like that. Congolese people don't look like that. You know? Also, look at this picture. The picture you see is the governor of of Ituri province in Congo. You know, as you can see, he's a white man. No single day those Congolese tribes will ever talk anything bad about Europeans. And the picture you just saw is he's probably the descendant of the Belgians. Belgians are the ones who colonized Congo. They would cut people's hands, they would use people as slaves, you know. But all evil things they done, nobody ever said anything. You know, and the moment that Congo will, can be led by Tutsi, uh, it will just take few years to get justice for all people, all the Congolese from 1800 when the Belgians were ruling Congo. So, but those guys, they are very, very weak. They don't know how to lead their the country. They very, very corrupted people, not organized, and all they have is hate. So anyway, at that time, August 13, 2004, the refugee camp was attacked. They burned people alive. 
killed people with guns and the next day the the United Nations they came it's like they always come after the massacre so we, we strongly condemn those attacks again that took place in 2004 in August against the refugees people who came to seek re a shelter so we ask international community to arrest uh, Agator Guasa the man in the picture you saw the reason that he need to be arrested is because the day after the massacre his spokesman Habiman that was his name so he, he, he was the spokesman for his rebel group he went on radio there's recordings there's all evidence and he said that we are the one who, who killed those people because they are soldiers you know the Tutsis so we killed them because they came into our country they are soldiers so but this man he was running a president he lost the election this year because Burundi had the election this year 2020 and that guy lost the election but he was the second opposition he was the second you know from the very close to winning the election and becoming a president after he committing a massacre so no but why people like that don't get arrested why people commit a massacre and they don't pay for it so that's how we don't have a justice that's how we can move forward when people they are doing they're killing committing massacre and they're not they're getting away with it you, people they are there you know them there's evidence but nobody's arresting them and so we ask international community to arrest Agator Guasa of Burundi for his involvement with the massacre of Banyamulenge Tutsis that took place on August 13, 2004. So, what happened happened in Rwanda 1994 has is similar thing happened to Congo all the time, you know. Also 1996 or 19, I think 1998, another Tutsi refugee camp in Rwanda by the border with Congo again. It was also attacked. Attacked. Those were the Tutsis from North Kivu. I'm not sure exactly the number of people who died, but there were hundreds of people. They were massacred, just like a Gatumba. So, as a Tutsi Congolese, we need justice. You know, we ask international community to provide a extra uh, protection. Because in Congo, as a Tutsi, you are viewed as outsider, despite living in Congo for as being a native to Eastern Congo. But because we are minority and we look physically different from those people, they think we are less of Congolese. Being a Congolese is defined as a Bantu according to them. So if your face is not round enough, if your nose is not wide enough, if your uh, body is not like big enough, you know, then you are not Congolese. That's how they are. So. It's very, very sad to be a Tutsi in Congo. Very, very difficult. You know, because there is no freedom. There is no freedom like other people, other Congolese. You know, every time you, you can't, we can't live from the same area. You go this side where there is no pe people from your community, they kill you. So, it's like being, uh, I don't know how to describe it, but it's like being a foreign in your own country. You know, everywhere you go, people stare at you, look at those faces, you know, they are visible here again. Because there's a place where I went in in Uvira, and that was after the war, the Banyamulenga left the, the, that city, and then we came back after the war to the city, and then people start saying, like, look at those faces, they are, visible, they are visible again here. You know, they start abusing, harassing us in the public. You know, those words, I was a kid, but I still remember every single thing. All those discrimination, just because you are Tutsi. The volcano in eastern Congo, such as Nyiragongo, Nyiramuragira, they are named in Kinyarwanda, meaning people who spoke Kinyarwanda are always native to eastern Congo. The national park of eastern Congo, known as the Virunga Park, Virunga is a Kinyarwanda word, which means volcano. So, and the park is by volcano areas. So, if all those historical sites and the name of the city such as Ruchuru, 
big territory in Congo, which is named in Kinyarwanda. That also means there was always people who speak Kinyarwanda in Eastern Congo. Even Kivu itself, the whole the name for the whole province is in Kinyarwanda. It means big war. So there's all evidence there that we are the true native to that area. But because we are a minority and we look different, then we are oppressed. And most of the time, the minority people in the area are actually the native people to that area. And the majority, they are always outsiders. Just like here in America. Native Americans, they are minority, but they were actually the ones here. America, Europeans, they came later. So, but again, people who came later, they are the ones who, uh, uh, who oppressed the people who actually were here for longer. So, anyway, we need justice and we need to ask the international community to support the Banyamulenge to protect them from all those ongoing genocide.